So in this tutorial video, we try to get you familiar with your lab test one formats, which is quite different from what you did uh, previously in all the uh, lab exercises. But the idea about computational thinking is really the same. It's just that format you have to get used to. So let's uh, first of all go over some uh, Eclipse, and then we'll, I'll show you conceptually how the uh, the two formats are different. Okay, just don't get confused when you do the lab exercises. You just keep the way it is. But when you do the lab test, you have to follow this particular format. Okay, so now in during your lab test, you can you can assume you're going to have a empty folder on the desktop, which is going to call the workspace. And then you will also get a zip folder, which is more like an archive file for some project for you to start with. So these are the two things that you can assume will be there on the desktop when you uh, come for your lab test one, or even lab test two later. Okay, so let me just show you uh, exactly what you should do uh, to really start your lab test. And then we'll see the formats, and then I'll explain to you conceptually how you can do it, and then I'll give you exercises to do uh, beyond this tutorial video, so you can get fully prepared for your lab test. Okay, so let's say you uh, you launch the Eclipse, and now when you select the workspace, make sure you say browse, and then you can go to uh, make sure you go to the desktop. So you can go to home, and then you can go to desktop. Once you go to desktop, make sure you choose the workspace, the empty folder I just show you as the workspace, and then you say okay, and then make sure it's on the desktop, and then the workspace, and then you say launch. So once you launch, you will see that it's completely just empty in the workspace for the Eclipse, which is expected. And we're going to import this particular archive file. Okay, in case it's not responding, you can just say wait, and then you will get to it eventually. Okay, so let me just uh, expand it over here. It's just a bit uh, slowly reacting to me. Okay. So now the Eclipse is launched. So let me just click on Workbench. And then, so now it's empty on the Package Explorer. Let me just maximize the Eclipse, okay? So what we'll do is we're going to import the uh, zip folder, the archive file that I just showed you on desktop. You can say File, and then Import. And then under General, you can say Existing Projects into Workspace, and then Next. If you try to practice this example test uh, on your home machine, it's going to be the same steps, okay? And then uh, now, rather than saying the root directory, you want to say select archive file, okay? And then you'll say browse. And when you browse, you want to make sure you go to home and then desktop, and then you choose a lab test one demo, for example, in this case, that's zip. Or uh, it can be example test one dot zip, or it can be the actual lab test one dot zip, depending on what the zip file is. Choose that, and then you say OK. And then you'll see there's a project over here for you to start with, and then you say finish. OK, once you finish uh, importing, you will see that there's only a single project over here. First of all, notice that there is no red cross on the Package Explorer tag. And also, if you expand the package, you'll see two classes over here. One is called utilities.java, okay, and the other one is called utilities.tester.java. You also have a text file called expected output. So these are the three uh, files you are given for your instruction, okay? So now, let me, uh, I will explain to you one by one. But now, first of all, you can see there's no red cross on these classes, right? If you, even if you click on utilities.java and you will open a tag for you, you can also click on utilities tester.java. You will also do the tag for you. And you can see there's no red cross, which means what, what I give to you to begin with, everything compiles. And you want to make sure when you submit your code, you only have to submit eventually just this utilities.java after you complete all the methods, which I'll show you how. So you only submit this particular file called utilities.java. You want to make sure there's no red cross in either this file or this file, okay? If there's any red cross in your project, that means something uh, wrong, like a syntax error or a type error, okay? If the expectation is high, we want you to submit valid programs so it can be run. If you submit any program that has a red cross, has a compilation error, you're going to receive zero for this test, okay? So that's really the high expectation I want to mention to you uh, even earlier in the class, okay? And also this stage. I want to make sure you really take it seriously when you do programming, okay? Okay, let me explain to you conceptually uh, how things work slightly differently 
uh, from how you did for the lab exercises, and then we'll try to do some simple exercises together with you in the tutorial. Okay. So now we got utilities. We also got utilities tester Java. Okay. So now let me switch to iPad over here, and let me compare how we do things differently between the labs and the lab test. Let's very quickly review how you uh, did things for your lab exercises. Okay. This is what you did uh, so far. Okay. Basically, you have a main method in your maybe rock paper scissors game compute hex or bmi compute and interpret right different programs for each main method you basically have to declare a scanner uh maybe called input and then you can say next int next double and next line that's how you prompt the user for the input right and then for your main method you're going to actually somehow do some uh computational lines in java over here and then for example if you read if you read in the radius from the user you have some computation for the parameter and also for the circle whatever you do over here eventually how do you output uh, how do you actually produce the output for your program you will simply say system that out the print or system that out the print line right so you read from the keyboard do some processing internally and then you output to the console that's kind of the workflow that we are we are used to you know back uh, up to now but now in the case of the lab test we can do something slightly differently, okay? The way you write your program uh, will be very similar for this part. So for, for this part, it's really just about the lines of Java code, you know, using maybe assignments, using if statements, uh, or later on, you gotta use loops, right? So these are the constructs that you use for your program over here. So now this part here does not include anything about, about a scanner or anything about a system or the print line, only the computation part. The computation part is going to be the same for the lab test, but the way we give the input and the way we return the output is going to be different for the lab test. So let me explain to you, okay? So now uh, let's just go over uh, very quickly the, the, the critical difference when you do the lab test. So when you do the lab test, number one, there will be no scanner to be declared, okay? Just notice that you should never ever declare the scanner during the lab test. And also you should never ever write any print statements or print line system that out the print or system that out the print line you never write these in your uh answer okay if you write them it's going to cause your program not to behave correctly and you'll lose marks okay number one there's no scanner for the inputs and there's also no print and print line for the output now the question would be how do we do input and output for the lab test we have a particular way of doing it let me just show you the overall picture and i'll illustrate to you on eclipse okay so basically what you will be given during the lab test will be a series of so-called methods. Uh, we'll talk about how you can define your own methods uh, a little bit later in the course, but you can assume that for the uh, lab test, you will be just given the skeleton for the methods. So basically everything about declaring the method has been done for you. You don't need to touch them. All you gotta do is to only fill in several, uh, fill in a blank area with your lines of Java code. That's all you gotta do. So I just need to explain to you how things work together so you can uh, really see how things work, okay? So now for every method, for example, uh, there's a method called average, which is supposed to count, uh, to calculate the average for two input integers. So the input will be integer X and integer Y. They do not really come from the keyboard. They simply come from a tester which we call utilities uh, tester which we just saw right remember we just saw on the eclipse there's a class over here called utilities tester okay that is the program that will actually call or uses the average method okay and then the utilities tester when they call the average method they are going to pass the input x and y they are not going to really enter the input from the keyboard just pass the values directly okay that's why it's called tester and then the average is uh, is going to do some computation, and this part is going to be just the same as how you did for lab exercises. Okay, so this part is really the same as this part over here. They are the same. Okay, without the input, uh, sorry, without the uh, input the next end, input the next line, input the next double, and also without the system and output print line, without these input and output. Okay, just this part over here is the same. And then how do we uh, produce the output? You are going to use a special statement, which I also give to you. You don't have to write it. It's called return, which is a keyword in Java. I will cover how you can uh, write a return statement yourself later in the course. Okay, you don't have to worry about how writing it for this particular lab test. 
Okay, return some result over here. As soon as the result is returned back to the utilities tester, the utilities tested will actually itself write system out the print line. So this is not written by you. It's only written by utilities tester. You do not write a uh, system out the print line yourself. Okay. Hopefully it's a bit clear now. So all you have to do for the lab test is you're going to be given a number of methods like average over here. Maybe you'll be given uh, between four to six methods for which you have to uh, fill in the blank area with how the computation can be done. As for the input over here, and also for the output, they have done, they have been done already for you. You don't have to worry about them. Okay, so that's kind of the conceptual idea I would like to mention to you. What I'd like to do, I would like to go back to Eclipse first and then show you how things work very quickly. And then I'll explain on iPad again. Okay, it's really important for you to get an uh, idea and get comfortable with this workflow before you try to do the exercises so you can get fully prepared uh, for the actual lab test. Let me go to uh, the Eclipse over here. So you can see that over here, let's say we, so now we got two classes. Let me just op only open utilities for now, okay? Utilities actually got uh, several methods. So we'll see test number one over here. There's a first method you have to implement. And also we have task number two, that is the second method. And we also got task number three, and we also have task number four. So we got four methods for this particular demo test uh, uh, for you to practice, okay? Let me just show this to you. So you can see for the first one, we actually got, uh, okay, let me uh, just go over very quickly and then I'll explain the iPad, okay? Basically, this uh, comments over here tells you what you're supposed to do. They simply say task number one, given an integer, given an input integer x, what we want to return is its square, mathematical square. If you give it not minus two, the square should be minus two times minus two, which is four, okay? And now uh, I will explain the uh, the anatomy of the method in just a moment. Okay, this is something that will be given to you so you don't have to worry. All you have to notice is uh, this uh, data type over here is the output type, okay? And this type uh, over here within the pair of parentheses is the input type. In this case, we only have one single input. You may have more than one input. For example, you can see that for this particular method over here, average off, okay? You can see that for that one, the output type is double, which means it is it's going to produce a double number. And then within the parentheses, you got double X and double Y. So these are the two input values you will get directly from the tester. You don't really get them from the input, uh, from the keyboard, okay? There's no scanner, again, in your lab test, okay? So now I want to look at the uh, the body of the implementation for your method. Okay, each one of them is has a similar has the same structure. Okay, let me explain one of them and do one uh, illustration to you. Okay, so now I want you to see this. The very first line I already did it for you. I simply declare a variable called result. I always call it result. Okay, we can keep this convention just make your life easier for the lab test. So you can see that I declare a variable called result and its type is simply just integer. And the int over here simply matches the return value, which means because you are expecting to return or output an integer value for this particular method, I simply just declare some local variable called uh, result. Uh, result over here with type int, okay? And then with some initial value zero. And you have to do something over here to reassign the result to some other value so that it's going to do the computation correctly with respect to whatever x you're given over here. Okay, I will, I'll get there in just a moment. And then after this, you can see the last line, always the last line, I simply return the result, which means uh, initially, I simply just uh, give you the result uh, variable with the initial value zero. And then I expect you to actually do something over here so that the final value that you actually return for this variable result is going to be the correct one, okay? So that's kind of the, uh, the uh, pattern you can follow, okay? So for those of you who are, sim are simply not familiar with Java, all you have to remember is this, okay? So basically this particular method over here, the name itself tells you it's going to calculate the square of, and now within the parentheses, so this is the input that you're given to do your computation. And the type over here, to the left of the method name is called the uh, output return value, uh, return type. 
And then I already declared the very first line for the return value and also the very last line to actually, uh, to actually return the value. So these two lines, you can always assume they will be there and you don't touch them. All you got to do is actually do something over here such that it is going to re uh, reassign the value for the result so it can be retired, returned correctly. Okay, so now you can also read the notes over here. I'll, I'll, I'll go over there with you uh, on the iPad. Okay, one more thing to say. And then you can go to utilities.java, uh, utilities tester.java, the other class. Okay, you will only be given two classes. And for this class over here, let me maximize it. So this is something you're more familiar with. Okay, you can see we do have a main method over here, which means we can run the utilities tester as Java application. That's exactly what you will do for many times during the uh, lab test. Make sure you know how to do it. I'll illustrate it to you again. And for line number five, uh, do not worry about this line. We're just creating an object so that you can call the various methods on the utilities that you implement. You don't have to worry about this line. It's just given to you, okay? All you have to know, all you're expected to know is how to interpret uh, the lines over here. Okay, I will show you the first one. Since we just talked about square off, right? So I want you to look at uh, these four lines, okay? So the first line, I simply just print out some separator, okay, over here, just uh, say it's a output number one. And then you can see that this is also something you are familiar with by the tutorial video so far. We are basically mixing two things. So this is a string literal over here that is just going to tell you something about the output being produced, being output to the console. It's simply square of minus two, which means for this particular line, it's going to tell you the output for input value minus two to the, to the square of method. And this is a, a notation that you don't really have to know uh, exact, exactly how it works. All you gotta remember is, if I want to really call the square of with a particular input value, okay? All I can do is I can say square of, but you want to make sure you always say u dot. Okay, we're gonna talk about dot notation when we talk about objects after the reading week. For now, just take it for granted, okay? So now for this particular case, when we say u dot square off, that means we're going to pass minus two over here, and minus two will be passed as input to this particular square off method. So that means x will be replaced by two. I'm gonna illustrate that to you in just a moment. And then it's going to follow through exactly whatever com uh, computation you have and then to see what to return, okay? And now, what would be the correct answer for you to expect? Okay, you gotta look at another file, okay? So now if you look at another file, which is called expected output, it tells you that, okay, if you look at that, open that, you can see this is uh, the first separator we just talked about. And it tells you that we for square of minus two, the return value should be four. So what does that mean? That means, for example, over here, when we say u dot square of two, this is the very first output, right? Under the separator one. So when we pass minus two over here, what we expect to return from this particular method will be just four, because you can see four over here, okay? And then you, that means if you go back to your utilities, you want to make sure whatever computation you do over here is going to guarantee when you're given minus two, it's going to return two. When you're given maybe minus five, it's going to return 25, okay? Let me just go to the uh, iPad and illustrate you everything together. Hopefully that will make a little bit more sense, okay? So now let me go to a new page over here. So these are the things that are actually involved. So the three things I just talked about, right? Okay, let's just go over there very quickly and I'll illustrate to you on, on the uh, Eclipse, okay? So this is the uh, task you're given. So actually always make sure you read this description very carefully, okay? So we are saying given an input integer x, return its square. Okay, just this, uh, the description over here. Okay, so now over here, this, the square of over here, it is called, let me just uh, be a little bit more careful over here. I only want to select this part over here. So this is called the name of method. Okay, that's the name of the method. And then the pink one over here to the left of the method name, this is called a return type or output type, return type. Okay, and over here you may have as many comma separated uh, input decorations or variable decoration over here, as many as you like, but in this case, it's only one. Okay, so this one is input variable decoration. 
So over here you can see that x is declared to be an integer. So you can only use x as an integer. You cannot use as uh, like a string, right? So uh, x is an integer. Okay. So now notice that uh, the two lines are already completed for you. You got integer result is assigned to zero, initially zero. And then you're going to return the result, whatever last value it get reassigned, uh, is, you're going to return it, okay? For now, let's just imagine what, what's going on over here. And for now, so this will be uh, where you have to put your solution for the lab test. So your code starts after this line. Okay, this is where you should really uh, put your code, okay? But now notice one thing, uh, I just go over the description with you. Okay, your test is going to implement this method over here so that running utilities tester the Java as application will output the expected value to the console. Okay, I'm gonna go over that step with you, but let's just read it together. Okay, do not write, do not, do not, do not. Okay, always remember, do not. So over here, so this is where you should write your code. Never ever write system the out of print line or never ever write system the out of print. Don't do them, okay? The only thing you have to do is to somehow declare new variables if you think necessary, and you want to make sure you reassign the result over here to be some correct value, uh, depending on what x is. Okay, and then eventually make sure whatever we return for the last value for result is going to the correct value. That's all you gotta make sure. Okay, and do not declare any scanner, and this is also very important. Let me highlight it. Do not reassign any of the parameter for input variable. So this, you can see over here, x over here is the input variable. So never ever do something like this. You, for example, if you say x is assigned to, for example, x times x, okay? This is not right, okay? So you, can, you never ever put the input variable, any of the input variable as the assignment target. You never ever do that. You only put it as part of the source. For example, you might say something like this. You might say result, which is declared over here, is assigned to maybe x multiplied by x. Okay, if you compare these two, this is okay. Because you're only using the input variable over here as the source for the assignment. It is okay for some computation. However, you should never ever put the uh, input at, on the left hand side of the assignment. It's not going to uh, uh, let your program work. Okay, just keep that in mind, okay? Now, let's see exactly how things will work, okay? So now, uh, let's go to the other class over here. Let's say we go to the utilities tester class, okay? It's a tester and with the main method over here, which means this is the main program you're going to uh, run as Java application throughout the uh, uh, duration of your lab test. Let's see exactly how it works, okay? As I said before, this line here, you can just assume it will always be there given to you. You don't have to worry about what it really means exactly for this uh, lab test. And then we have our first uh, separator. That is why you also see the separator over here in the uh, output, right? So now, so this is the expected output, okay? We say square of two uh, minus two. Okay, what does that really mean? When you say square of minus two, that means you're really using, uh, you're really using this particular square of method over here, and then you're trying to actually do something to it, okay? And now, in the case of, uh, in the case of you say minus two over here, that means you're passing this particular input. That means that x over here in this particular call, x will become just minus two. That means whatever you do over here is going to be uh, using minus two for the x value. But you might pass different value. You might pass minus three or minus four or five. So you want to make sure you keep your program as general as possible so that you will work for any input, okay? And then over here, uh, this is how we call the uh, method, okay? And the call is already made there for you. So you can just uh, execute the, uh, the call. You can say u dot and then square of and then minus two and then three. If you're really comfortable with this particular calling uh, syntax, you can feel free to add more tests to your uh, lab test, uh, during your lab test, just to make sure your program really works for all the various inputs, okay? Okay, so now you can see that this particular line is going to be uh, like that. So this four is expected to be the case, okay? But initially, I'm gonna show you, when you are given some starter program, 
you can still uh, execute it as Java application. However, it is not going to give you the correct result to begin with. Okay, I'm going to show you why. Okay, and then uh, also if you try the second separator, uh, that should be oh sorry, expanded output should be another second separator. So this is a typo over here. Okay, this should be something like this. Okay, beg your pardon. I'll make sure I fix it. Okay, this is also expected over there, and also uh, for the fourth line, you're expecting uh, for minus three or three is going to be nine. Okay, so this is kind of uh, uh, the structure for the three uh, three things. So now what you want to make sure is when you try to run your utilities tester, the Java as Java application is going to produce some outputs based on how you actually implement this particular method. Okay. If you haven't done anything, whatever you produced is not going to match the expected output. Okay, you have to make sure you implement your method correctly so that the produced output is going to give you the right result as expected. Okay, let's illustrate this on the Eclipse. Okay, but really try to go over uh, uh, these three things together and make sure you understand what's going on. Okay. Okay. Now let's see exactly what's going on here. So now I want to illustrate to you right away uh, in this. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, just go back to the uh, package explorer. So now you can see that. Let's just use the square off as an example over here. So now for the square off uh, method over here, let's say you simply just didn't do anything. Okay. You can see that everything compiles, which means the program can just be executed. Okay. So what I will do is. I'm going to uh, right click on the utilities tester.java over here, and then I will simply right click, and then I will say run as Java application. That's what I will do. Okay. So when I do that, I want you to pay attention to this particular output over here, right? Remember, that was the first one, right? The, the very first one. When we try to call square of uh, minus two, right? Minus two over here. So now it says that square of minus two is actually zero okay apparently this is the we call this the actual output that is produced by your current implementation your program however if you simply just compare this line over here okay i'm gonna highlight this line here if you compare this line versus the very first line for the expanded output file you can see they don't actually look the same right you can see the expanded output is four but the actual value produced by your program is actually zero so why is your program producing just zero? Let me explain that part very quickly again. Okay. Apparently, if you go back to your utilities over here, and the square off simply contains no, nothing but what I gave to you initially, right? So now let's go back to Eclipse over here. I want to explain to you once more about the structure. Okay. Let me just uh, copy this uh, this diagram over here, and then let's uh, talk about it in the next slides. Okay, let me just go to a uh, new page. Okay, so let's have a look at this particular task. Okay, and then, oh, let me also put something back over here. Okay, let me just also put that thing back. Let me also put this utilities tester also back there. Okay. Okay, so now uh, remember we actually uh, execute, we run the utilities tester as Java application, right? Okay, now I want you to focus on this. Okay, let's see exactly how things work. So I want you to focus on this line over here. Okay, when we say u dot square of minus two. Okay, when we say, when we call this particular method with the value minus two. Okay, minus two, uh, let me use a red maybe. So this is minus two, okay? And then we're going to have uh, x over here is going to be for this particular call is going to be just minus two, okay. And now what about the rest of the program? The first line simply declare the result over here to be zero. And then since we don't do anything over here, so it's just not going to reassign the result to any value rather than the initial zero. And then when we say returns result over here, it's just going to return zero over here. That means this particular method call is just going to be returning zero. That is why 
in the Eclipse program over here, you see zero in the beginning because you haven't done anything yet, okay? What if I try to actually implement it, let's say in a way, okay? So now what I can do is I can say result is assigned to, let's say, whatever x I'm given multiplied by x. That's what I would do, okay? Which means now I really try to reassign the value for result to be something so that the reassigned value over here can be returned. Let's see what's going on over here, okay? So now, if I simply right click on this utilities tester and run it again, I can say run as Java application. And what I would get over here, oh, I can just say okay, okay? Okay, over here you can see that the very first one, you can see now it changes, right? It used to be zero, and now you can see the actual output produced by my program over here the return value for square off with the input minus two is now four, simply because the expected output over here, you can see that's actually just matches that, okay? Because it's a correct implementation, you can see that this one, when I give minus three, that also give me the right result over here. So as long as you get the right result, you can think about each of the eight uh, test cases over here are the minimum requirements for you to pass. And so you should really make sure during the lab test, you can at least pass all the tests that are given to you. And we might test you more with more uh, input values when we grade your submission. But the bottom line is, number one, you want to make sure all your code compiles. There should be no syntax error and also no type errors, okay? Otherwise, you get zero. And also, when we evaluate a code, we're gonna see for the various input values, is your program going to produce all the correct results? That's something you want to practice, okay? Let me illustrate to you one more thing, okay? And then, uh, as I said before, uh, no scanner and no system out of print line, okay? And make sure you follow these rules very carefully, okay? And now, a very common mistake. If you forgot, okay, now I'm gonna illustrate it's gonna be false, okay? If I simply say the input value x over here is just going to be assigned to x times x, okay? This is actually not going to work because we always return the result. So now you're just returning the wrong thing, okay? So you just make sure you all, you never ever put X on the left-hand side uh, or the input value on the left-hand side of the uh, uh, assignments, okay? So you just put result over here, okay? Always try to use the result for the reassignments so that eventually you can just return the output value. So now let me just illustrate again. So now what we really have done differently uh, is this. So what I put over there was I simply put a uh, result is assigned to x times x. So now if I try to consider the same call over here again, so I got minus two over here, that means x will still be minus two. Okay, so now, so that, uh, let me just get rid of this. Uh, let me just use a new one, the pink one. So I'm declaring the result with the initial value zero over here. And then I say result is going to be reassigned to x times x. What is x? x for this particular call is actually minus two. That means I got minus two multiplied by minus two, I get four. That means four is going to be stored to the result. So four is going to be here. So now when I return the result, it's not going to return this particular value. That means this return value over here, after I implement the method properly, is going to be four, okay? So all you have to make sure is for every method you're given, you have to make sure you understand exactly what's being assigned to you. So this, uh, this is an informal description. You have to look at what input values you're given over here. Usually you may have to do some assignments uh, using the input values. You wanna use the input value to do some assignment to the result, like what I'm doing over here, right? You're using the input value over here on the right hand side to do some reassignments to the result. Okay, or you may want to do some if statements to check the value for the input. That's a very typical. I do have some exercises for you. I would like you to try first, okay? And then that's what you would do. Let me just illustrate one more example and then I will just tell you what you should do as an exercise, okay? One more example to show you. So now we are okay with uh, the square off. Oh, for the square off, let's say this. If you really feel comfortable, you can feel free to add more test cases for yourself. If I go back to utilities tester over here, you can see so far, actually this one is a typo. It should be minus three, okay? That's my mistake. So you should be given as minus three, okay? So now you can see that we got minus two, we got minus three, but we don't seem to have tested the square of positive number. If you actually have doubts about it, you can feel free to actually give more 
test cases. This is how I would do it. Okay, you simply copy this line over here, and then you can add a new line over here. Uh, okay, let me just do it uh, slowly for you. Okay, you can right click on that. You can say copy, and then you can right click on the next line, and then you can say paste. So now, for example, you may want to try what's the square of, for example, five over here. And then you can also modify the comments over here. Make sure you modify both at the same time so they're in sync. Okay, save it. Oh, by the way, every time you modify your code, notice that there is a star over here, okay? There's a star in the utilities tester. Well, you might have a star also in the utilities. Make sure every time before you run your Java code, make sure everything is saved. There should be no star. Okay, and let me save it, Control S. And also I go to utilities over here, I also say Control S. So everything should be saved. Okay, let me go back here. So now that means I'm adding a new line uh, over here for the tester. That means I'm testing more about my method. You can feel uh, you can feel free to add as many more test cases as you like because I'm gonna test you more, more than what I give to you uh, as, as the example tests. Okay, so now I can right click on utilities tester and then I can say run, uh, run as uh, Java application. And now you can see that I do have over here square of five, which is 25, right? So you should really try to practice as a software engineer or as a professional programmer. You want to also be responsible for the correctness of your code, you sh uh, correctness if, of your code. You don't want to rely completely just on the example tests I gave to you. What I gave to you may not be complete, okay? Okay, good. So now what I want, uh, I'm gonna make the uh, this source code available to you. You can definitely try out exactly from scratch, okay? I want to mention one more thing. Let's do one more practice, okay? So now what about over here? How do I calculate, for example, uh, let's say this one, average off, right? So now basically the same skeleton over here. So we are given this particular method over here. You can see this method here is going to return a double which means I declare result to be a double type accordingly and also return it in the last line. Okay, similar as before. Every method has a similar structure. And now I have basically two input values, X and Y. And one thing, don't get confused. You can see for this particular method here, average of, I have an input called X. And for square of, I also have an input called X. The X over here is different from the X over here, okay? One thing which we, we talk about in the class is called scope of the variable. For this particular input integer, X, it's only used within the body of this particular method. You don't really refer to this particular integer X outside this method here. Similarly, you can see the, uh, the two variables over here, double X and double Y. So the double X and double Y, they're only referred to within this particular method for average of, you don't refer to the outside this average of method, okay? So now, how can we do it? So how do we calculate the average of two double numbers? Well, it's easy, right? You can simply add it up and divide it by two. I'll just do one more for you, okay? And then we can say result. Again, you want to reassign to the result. You never ever reassign to the uh, input variable, in this case, X and Y, okay? You can say result uh, is a reassigned to uh, X plus Y, and then you can put them in brackets to say, I want to force the addition to be done first, and then divide it by two, okay? Something like that, okay? That's how you can implement that, okay? Uh, okay, you know what? Let me just put this into comment first, okay? So that's not, uh, that's not effective just yet, okay? As if we haven't done anything. If I try to execute uh, run as uh, Java application, you will see that the corresponding output for uh, average of, you can see at the moment, the average of 3.0 and 4.0 is simply 0.0. .0. Apparently that is wrong, because if you look at the expected output over here, the average of, if you look at that block, average of 3.0 and 4.0 should be 3.5. This is the expected return value from your average of method. But this over here is the actual value 0, 0.0 that's returned at the moment. You want to modify your average of methods so that it's go going to return the correct value. How do we modify that? So that part will be very easy. You simply say result is reassigned to x plus y divided by two. And make sure you save all the file and let's relaunch the program and let's see what happened. And now if, if I relaunch the program, you will see that now the actual output produced is going to be affected by this particular line we just added, right? So it's gonna be 3.0, 4.0, 
So now you can see for this particular call, if you go to utilities tester over here, for this particular call average of, we got 3.0, 4.0. For this particular call, X would be uh, 3.0. This would be 3.0 and Y would be 4.0. So when we try to add it up together and divide it by two, it's going to be the correct result, which is over here, 3.5. Okay, so hopefully you are now comfortable with the flow. So now I am going to make the uh, uh, lab test one demo project for you to begin with. They contain uh, very easy exercises for you just to finish them as soon as you can and make sure you are cl uh, clear about the workflow for your lab test. And then I'm gonna make another starter project that's slightly more challenging for you to practice for the methods, okay? So make sure you're comfortable with all the formats and make sure you understand exactly what you can use and what you cannot use within the method. I explained that many times uh, in this video. Make sure you watch them and rewatch them as necessary. Finally, I wanna recap, okay? And then we are done with uh, this uh, video here. Okay, and then, uh, so now you have to very clearly distinguish between either you're doing lab exercises or you're doing lab tests. The way you do, especially the way you do input and output is different. In the case of lab exercises, you simply use scanner input and also system and outer print line for input and output. In the case of the lab test, what we're doing is, is slightly different. We have introduced a new class uh, called utilities tester, which with a main method. And then the utilities tester is going to call the different methods in the utilities class, which you have to implement. And for each method, for example, average, it, the utilities tester is going to pass the uh, values to, to call the method. For example, for average, you can pass maybe X be 3.0 and Y be 4.0. And then the average itself is going to execute the lines of code that you as a programmer will implement. For example, over here, for average of, the line of code I just showed to you uh, as a programmer is this. So this seems to be the only line you have to add in order to get a method correct, right? Everything else has been done for you, okay? You just have to understand everything together, how do they work together, right? Okay, so when it re once the uh, average returns the result, we're going to uh, run the uh, unit uh, utilities tester as Java application. Okay, once you run it as Java application, it's going to produce something, okay? And this actual output must match whatever I give to you as the expanded output file over here, right? You can see the expanded output. You wanna find a corresponding section there and make sure the return value from your method really matches exactly what's specified over there, okay? So now get, get yourself comfortable with this format here and then if you got questions, let me know.